Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I want to talk to you about being self-employed. So you have a YouTube channel, you have an Etsy store, you earn income that is not at a business that takes out your taxes for you. And what I do, this is for me personally, what I do throughout the year to make tax time that much easier. Now, disclaimer, I am not a tax professional. I do not play one on TV. I am not preparing, telling you how to prepare your taxes. I'm telling you how I get prepared to take my stuff to my tax person. I have a person that that's her job. She's my tax lady. Love her to pieces. She keeps up on all the tax laws because they do change frequently. And that, you know, is always an issue. But when you're self-employed, if you make over a certain amount of money, you do have to claim that as income. So along with that, you get deductions. So you gotta kinda have everything covered. So I'm gonna go over with you today how I organize myself starting at the beginning of the year and how I move forward every month to get ready for tax time. If that interests you, stick around. And if you could subscribe, like, leave a comment below. I know there's a lot of new YouTube channels out there who have recently gotten monetized. And when that was me, I was looking for some information. And so I'm going to give back and I'm going to share what I have found with you. Okay. Are you ready? So got handy dandy notebook here because duh, I always write things down. The first thing that I do is I have a pen to flex file folder and I have one that has I think this one has exactly 12 it does so I have a section for each month for the year January through December and in each section what I do is I print my bank statement each month now we're gonna start at the very beginning Yes, this is my organization, but I forgot the most important thing. I recommend, and my tax person has recommended to me, to have a separate bank account for your business. You're a YouTuber, you're monetized, you are now self-employed, this is your business. So you need to have, or you should have, could have, I recommend a separate bank account. And all of my transactions that I take or do for my YouTube channel come out of this bank account. I have my monthly um, pay deposited into this account. I have a savings account attached to it where I put my tax money and I have a debit card and I do all my expenses out of this specific bank account. Now, if I use a credit card for something or if I need cash flow, I can use my other accounts. It's just not as tidy. So I know at the end of the month when I print off that bank statement, it's all my Dollar Tree stuff and any other ancillary things and I can highlight what is what and I can keep track because I do have a spreadsheet that I track each month and I'm pulling it out. I also have one of these I get every year from the Dollar Tree and this is all of my tax documents, my backup. Here is a list of the W-2s and 1099s I was waiting for because all my taxes are done together. I don't have a separate tax accountant for YouTube and a separate for my personal. It all gets done together, but I need to have my expenses for YouTube laid out. So I have a list here of all the documents I'm waiting for. And over here, it just tells me my tax year. This one I just got at the Dollar Tree and it just holds all of my stuff. So when I go to my tax accountant, it's all together because being organized makes everybody's life a lot easier. So what I do, I did is I created, I'm not going to show you too close because it's a lot of my personal information, but I created a spreadsheet and on this spreadsheet, what I track every month, every month is the following. I track my mortgage payment. So mortgage or rent, how much you're paying. Um, do I have HOAs? Yes, I track those. I track my I track my electric, my gas, my internet. I track how much I spend each month at the Dollar Tree. 
I track if I'm doing mailings, if I'm doing giveaways, I track my mailing envelopes, my postage, I track for my PO box. If I go to, I made uh, this year something, I bought some materials at Home Depot, I track that. Um, Amazon, if I order anything, and then I track how much I paid to have my taxes done last year because she tells me that's a tax deduction. Well, go Sally. And then I also track, which is interesting, the miles that I drive to all the different stores. So I just have a running spreadsheet and then it all, it all, it all collates on a front sheet for her that I just hand her. Now, why do I track all this information? Because some of these things can be a tax deduction. Some may not. I, I don't know because I don't, I don't follow the tax laws close enough to know, but my tax person sure does. And I want to have every piece of information together. So when I get there, cause I usually just stay while she's doing my taxes and she's like, okay, well, you know, the, there is a law that says if you're your home office is dedicated workspace by so many square feet of your living. You can deduct that much of it. I mean, there's like calculations. I, I don't know what it all is, but I will say this. I give her all the information she needs and that's a part of being organized. That's all. So I bring with me this sheet that does have all of my expenses listed on it. And then in here, I keep the backup. So I have 12 months worth of bank statements. I have any receipts from when I paid for my PO box, when I went to Home Depot, what I spent on Amazon, what I spent on postage, because I put them in this every month. And then at the end of the year, I pull them together in here. So that is important to have for your tax person because we, it's just not about paying a percentage of your income because you have expenses around that income that you're earning that helps you earn that income. So you should take advantage of any deduction that you qualify for because that is your right to do that. But you wanna also have backup for anything that you're bringing to the table. You really wanna say, well, you know, the first year I went, I'm like, well, this is a square footage of my condo. The room that I work in is dedicated space for my channel, this is my dedicated office. It's this much percent of my square footage. So we can, and she's like, okay, then you can deduct this much percentage of blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, well, great. I have all those numbers for you. So it just makes it easier. Um, especially internet, you're using your internet. I mean, I use almost 50% of my internet is for the channel. So those are the things that we need to know, you know, what percentage of what you're using. Um, you want to keep your receipts, keep all of your receipts. Anything that you purchase a couple years ago, I bought a MacBook. I kept that receipt because part of that MacBook I use for business. So it's a deduction. You just want to keep it all and have it handy and talk to your tax person and say, you know, and I would go to somebody who has experience doing self-employment taxes because it is different than personal taxes. Just so you know. Um, you want to have your bank statements. Most banks are digital. I just go on my phone every month and I print out my bank statements. Now, I will tell you, <laughs> my bank is so frustrated. I Yes, I work for a bank, but I do not do my business banking through the bank that I work for. I have a whole separate bank account at a separate bank to separate those duties, you know, work from. So that bank cycles the 15th to the 15th, which is, I don't understand. But so I have two, I have statements that stagger, which is fine. I go through my bank statement. I highlight what store I went to, where it's located. So then I have a tally. And I don't necessarily do this every single month. Do I print everything and have everything saved? Yes. And then I go in every couple months and just tally up. Uh, my expenses, I can go online and look at my gas and electric bill and know what they were every month. My internet is pretty much the same. Um, I'm not sure about my cell phone. I do use my cell phone to film, but I don't know about the cell phone bill. And mine, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'll have to ask her about that. Um, mileage, make sure you're keeping track of where you're going because you get mileage for driving to and from. So there's that. If you have 
paid sponsorship. So if somebody reaches out to you and says, hey, will you talk about my XYZ pen company? We'll pay you $100. Okay, and they're gonna send it to you via PayPal. Just keep receipts. Just again, receipts and organization are gonna get you through your tax season better than anything else that I can tell you on here. Um, and, and like I said, this is not just for YouTube monetization, but if you have an Etsy store, you need to keep track of your expenses for your materials, your supplies, your shipping, your, you know, whatever you're being charged for. If you have an income, you have expenses and the two of them together is what calculates how much money you're going to owe to the IRS for taxes. So you really need to keep a, a good diligent track of your expenses to mitigate any of your monies that you're going to have to pay out, if that makes sense. So checks and balances, everything's separate. Um, the first year I monetized, I did not have a separate bank account. And I will tell you, it was, it was a time consuming task to dig through my personal bank account, looking for all the times I went to the Dollar Tree. So having a separate bank account out of the gate, it's the first of the year, perfect time to start it, get your separate bank account, put some money in it, and then set up your YouTube AdSense revenue to go to that account and everything is tidy and clean in one space and then only use that account for your business expenses, whatever those businesses are. And let's say I decided to open my Etsy shop back up and I'm gonna sell pens, then I would, change my banking information and have it sent to the bank that I'm using for YouTube and I could blend those together. But I wouldn't, I, I won't have all that stuff sent to my personal account where I pay my personal bills is all I'm saying. But if you're going to deduct something from your taxes, you, de you do need to have documentation. That I can tell you without a doubt, um, you do need to have documentation on what you spent, where you spent, how much was it? What was it used for? And for me, because I do mostly do Dollar Tree hauls, it's pretty easy. Dollar Tree. But I do, sh I do giveaways on occasion. So there's shipping, there's postage, there's packaging and materials and things like that that I try to keep track of as well. So it just kind of depends on what your channel is and what your overhead costs are. So keep that in mind and I hope that is helpful. I feel like sometimes in the YouTube community we're doing some gatekeeping on information or it's just not easy to share with each other because, you know, we don't communicate in that manner. So I thought, well, I'll use my platform to maybe help somebody else who's starting off new and isn't quite sure what to do with that side of YouTube. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was informative and you have a great day and I will talk with you later. Bye.